Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God, hello. Uh, my ringer was off, um, so never mind. You know, to, you know to whom I speak. Um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Peter chapter 1. It is important and imperative for you to follow along in the scriptures word by word, verse by verse with me. Okay? Please follow me along in the scriptures, the authorized version, commonly called the King James Version. Okay? Uh, for this video, I'm going to, of course, use the authorized uh, version, but I'm also going to be referencing this, which has the scriptures, but it also has the non-King James Version, the um, non-inspired Vomitus, NIV, and the Nefarious Luciferian Translation, or as one brother had said, nitwit living in trash. <laughs> going to be referencing this here at some point. The reason why I'm not using this in its entirety for this video is because the scriptures in this Bible, which has the scriptures, but it has Bibles in it. This is a collection of books. The reason why I'm not using this in its entirety is because the scriptures in this are written, are put in paragraph form. And um, I can't stand reading a set of scriptures that is in paragraph form. I have all kinds of trouble keeping my place <laughs> in a paragraph form of the scriptures. Um, Thank you on to those on to those of you who have given um, scriptures that I have a couple uh, that one and a few others that are in paragraph form. Uh, I do try to use them, but that it's uh, but anyway, that's why I'm not using that. But I'm going to reference that to show you some things. Okay, but Second Peter chapter one. And we are going to first read 2 Peter chapter 1 in its entirety. And then we're going to make some stops along the way, okay? So, let us begin. 2 Peter chapter 1, in its entirety. Follow me along in the scriptures. Shimon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Clearly, this is addressed unto whom? Those of the Church of the Living God. Saved people. Okay? Important to note that. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God... There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is knowing something. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Okay? And of Jesus our Lord. Let's read that again. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. One and the same. One and the same. Jesus the Father. One and the same. Okay? Jesus is the Father. Okay? According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, being separate then 
other than holy, okay? Living life in accordance with the scriptures, okay? Adhering your life unto the scriptures will separate you from the world that is outside your door, okay? Difference between holy and profane, see, okay? That doesn't mean that you are like Christ, okay? You have to be careful with this, well, I want to be like Christ. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Jesus Christ, God the Father, cannot sin. Never has, never will. It's impossible. Okay? God cannot sin. Jesus Christ is God. He is the Father. Okay? So you need to be really cautious yourself. If you, well, I'm trying to be like Christ. You can't be like Christ. We are to follow Paul's example of following Christ. Okay, but beware, especially of the Catholic imitation of Christ. Okay, uh, I have a video on that. If I remember, I'll put it in the description box of this. Okay, uh, be very cautious. Okay, you can't be like Christ. You can't. Christ is God. He is the Father. He never sinned. He can't sin. You at your best state there, buddy boy. You at your best can't go a day without a sin. <gasps> you say you do, huh? You say you have? You say that there you go a day, a 24-hour period without sin? You lie. You're a liar. Look at me. You're a liar. You're deceiving yourself. You lie. You can't go a day, 24 hours, without sinning. Because you got to remember, too, sin can be a thought. And what happens if you go a whole day, according to some of you, that you don't sin a whole day, 24 hours, you know, morning, then evening? That'll lead to pride, won't it? Yeah, get over yourself. Get over yourself. The greatest of the church of the living God, our example, Paul, he didn't go a day without sinning. How do you know that? Romans chapter 7, dear friend. Okay, Get over yourself. Get over yourself. That doesn't mean that you indulge in it, people. No. 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 But be cautious with that. Cautious with that. Let's continue. Uh, let's uh, reread again in verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. Adding to. Adding to. Something that comes after a fact to add on. Mm. Let's continue. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, oh boy, oh boy, patience. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, wow, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to patience, godliness. Separation. Godliness is tied inevitably with separation. Being separate, other. Being other and separate than the world that is outside your door. Okay? We get, we, get, we get that, right? Okay, let's continue. Verse 7. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, self-sacrifice. Who is our brother? Who is our brothers and sisters? 
those of the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, converted. I might not like you. You might not like me. But if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God and accurately referred to as Christians, okay? You are my brother. I am your brother. You are my sister. I am your brother. You might not like me. I might not like you. That, okay, whatever. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you're my brother. And I'm your brother, whether you like that or not. Okay? You understand? Let's continue. For if these things be in you, and abound, if, for if, these things be in you. What things? What things? Virtue, knowledge, patience, temperance, godliness. If they be in you. And abound. And abound. Don't forget the and abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind. What, is, what things is he lacking? Again, virtue, knowledge, patience, temperance, godliness. Sanctification, being other than, separate than, okay? But he that lacketh, lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, not considering their latter end. And hath, now right here, check this out, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Now, hold up. Purged from who are the ones who are purged from their own sins, people? Yes, those who are of the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, converted, those who come unto our Lord Jesus Christ, broken. Yeah, oh, yeah, this, yeah, that that horse is going to be beaten to death. You come to the Lord broken of your self-righteousness, thinking that you're a good person and that you can do something yourself. Okay? Contrite. Okay? Being broken will lead to contrition, having sorrow. But is your sorrow placed on the fact that it's your fault? Yes, it's your fault. My fault. I, I am not excluded from that. It's my fault. Your fault. That our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, went to the cross and died and shed his blood to cleanse us from our sins. Okay? Broken, brokenness and contritionness. That is a requirement of our Lord to come unto him. And see, those two things, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Because he can put you in hell. Oh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Fear him. Fear him. And in the, now those three things, okay? It's not a step one, step two, step three, are you saved, brother? No. They happen in one event. And see, those who are not saved can't understand that. You can maybe know of it because of something that is printed, but knowing as to relation, you can't know that. It's one event. Okay? In that fear, you are going to cry out for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me. I am a sinner. I, I can't save myself. Have mercy upon me, a sinner who is chief. Okay? Okay? So, then you come to him on his terms. He saves you and hath forgotten that he was purged, verse 9, from his old sins. Okay? 
So those who are what are, is the lost world purged from their old sins? No. God, he, our Lord is there. Our Lord is there. But see, you have to go to Him on His own terms, not yours. Okay. Again, hence the easy believism heretics. They skip over that. Okay. That's I've talked about that quite a few times. Okay. So. Let's continue. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, giving diligence to make your calling and election sure. Now, election here in context. Election is the church of the living God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, chose the way of the cross. He chose. The church of the living God. It is not a Calvinistic, you are destined to go to heaven, you are destined to go to hell. No, God would have all men to be saved. Okay? It's not elect and non-elect. But God has chosen this way. Okay? Hence, election in this dispensation. Okay? We are part of the elect. Put into the tree of the Jew. Okay? The Hebrew. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? But the election is not what Calvin teaches. Again, I have a video uh, talking about that. If you're curious, go check it out. See? Okay? Wherefore, rereading verse 10, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence, I, I beg your pardon, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Thank you, part for that. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? Uh, examine yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, self-examination, ye shall never fall. And remember, today's the 24th. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked will fall into mischief. Let's continue. For so an entrance shall be ministered. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Sometimes, brethren, you can act foolishly, behaving as if there is no God. As the church of the living God, you, me, we can do virtually any sin out there that the devils can do. Yes, this is truth. That is true. I know a lot of you like to dispute that, but when you get right down to it, prove that to you. Read the books of First and Second Corinthians. Okay, in reality, trying to signal out a specific incident within First and Second Corinthians, no. In its totality, what Paul is addressing in First and Second Corinthians, those who are of the Church of the Living God can get quite messed up. But see, there's correction. Okay, there's rebuke. There's chastening. Okay, 
God's not going to allow his children, his sons, his daughters, to remain in such a state without severe chastisement or, if it's bad enough, and you're, you're refusing enough, quenching the Holy Ghost, they'll kill you. So, let's continue. Yea, I think it me, oh, verse 13, Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. He's, he's talking about his body. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath shewed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Again, verse 9. But he that lacketh these things, again, what things are those? Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience. Which leads to what? Godliness. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I had to shut the door. Um, I, I don't know if you could hear it. My wife was uh, playing hymns in the background. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Let's continue. Let's continue. Where were we? Okay. We, uh, we left off at verse 15. Okay. For we have not, uh, verse 16, followed cunningly devised fables. Cunningly devised fables. Yea, hath God said. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Uh, talking about when um, this is my beloved son, uh, hear him uh, when he was transfigured and they saw Jesus only. Okay. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts the day star. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And the, the, the Catholics are <laughs> uh, private interpretation. Yes, yes. Uh, you got to go to these work courses or just give me an example. Um, you have to pay money in order to learn something deeper in the scripture by some of these Catholic coadjutors, okay? No, no. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Don't worry, we're going to expound on these uh, verses 19 on to verse 21 specifically here in a little bit. Don't worry about that, okay? Chill, don't get ahead of me, okay? For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, now, okay. Peter is seeking to put the people into remembrance. To be diligent, okay. We have already seen that, alright. But when it comes to verse 19... We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the 
day star, lowercase by the way, arise in your hearts, the day star, the day star. Who is the day star? The day star is the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Now, looking back at verses 4 on to verse 9, okay, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Go back to verses 4 on to verse 9. Whereby are given unto us exceeding and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, being separate, holy, other, okay? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, Something is being added to what is already there. When the Lord first saves you, do you know everything? I, I know some of you youngins out there like to think you do. But do you know everything? Huh? No. No, you, you most certainly don't. You're, you're a babe. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I was a babe. You were a babe. You are, babe, whatever. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay? In and of itself, there ain't nothing wrong with being ignorant. You just don't know better. Okay? There ain't nothing wrong with that. But when you are first saved, yes, all things are yours, yes. But when the Lord first saves you, do you know everything? Can't, I, okay, we can't know everything, right? Absolutely, you're right, and thank you, thank you. I know some of you might have been thinking, it's like, hey, right? No, no, no. When he first saves you, you are a babe. You need milk, okay? You need to learn how to crawl before you can walk, okay? And that is how it is in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So, and beside this, giving all diligence and to your faith, add. <laughs> See, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, knowledge, knowing, which is different from wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding, to be separate than, other than, okay, and to knowledge, Temperance and to temperance, patience. Patience. And to patience, godliness. Separate than, other than. Not sinlessly perfect. You can't be sinlessly perfect. Even for a day. Even for a day. About that again? If you didn't feel the need to tell people, well, I don't sin every day. Uh, uh, hello, genius. Hello. Is that not boasting? Oh, I don't sin every day. Is that not boasting? All such boasting is evil. Okay, let's let's for a moment. Let's just for a moment, okay? Where, 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 where'd that go? Beg your pardon. Let's just say for a moment that you can be Christ-like for one day, morning till evening, 24 hours. <laughs> okay, but let, okay, let's, let's just say you can. That's not something that you're going to boast about, is it? Is it? Well, I don't sin every day. That's boasting, dear friend. That's pride. Guess what? Pride is sin. Godliness there, knowledge, knowing Scripture, knowing our Lord through the Scripture, okay? Temperance, being in control. He who has, hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls, okay? Okay? And, uh, and to temperance, 
we're reading in verse 6, sorry. Patience, not long-suffering. There's a difference between patience and long-suffering, okay? Patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, which is self-sacrifice. For if these things be in you. Now these are fruits that the Lord will give to you, but you have to remember. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is not forcing you to do anything. Neither is Lucifer, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, forcing you to do anything. And this is where the easy believism devil heretics like to creep in, okay? Because the truth is, the Lord is not forcing these things upon you. He will make known to you His will through the Scriptures. And because you are saved, born again, converted, you have the witness, the Holy Ghost, and our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that Spirit living within you. He within you. Don't touch that. Don't look at that. Don't hang out with that guy. Don't call him. Don't do this. Don't do that. But he's not going to force you to do that. You have the ability, brother, sister, to quench the spirit of all things. You do. You're going to pay a heavy price for that. You're going to lose many things. No, you will not lose your salvation. See, and that's what the easy believism heretic hinges on. But see, there again, the easy believism heretic in the beginning is not preaching the true Jesus Christ of the Scriptures. They're preaching to you an errand boy who's okay with your sin. And these devils teach you how to have peace with your sin. Okay? Remember, God's not forcing you to do anything. Okay? The Lord will change your life. Like, hey, don't do, don't do, don't do. I'm telling you, you're gonna, gonna disobey me? Fine. Have your way. And reap the poisonous fruit of that. Your testimony will be destroyed. Your life will be shot. You pay a heavy price. Yes, you're saved. But again, again, is the Lord going to be ashamed of you letting him letting you in? Or are you going to hear well done? Good and faithful servant. You serve the Lord out of love for what He has done for you because of what you have done for Him. And those who are not of the church of the living God don't get that. It's all about them. Let's continue. Verse 8. For if these things be in you, the ascend mentioned, and abound, abound, continue, grow, Okay? Abounding, growing, continuing. Okay? If these things be in you. Okay? It's not talking about the Lord. Because context. He is writing, speaking unto whom? The church of the living God. Okay? That's who he's talking to. That's who he is addressing in this. Putting them into remembrance. Okay? For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren, which is a consequence of you quenching the Spirit and not obeying the Lord through the Scriptures of Him saying, don't do that, don't do this, stay away from that, give that up, okay? 
you as a church, I, see, I don't get that. Because he, he wants to guide you on not only for his glory, but for your benefit. Okay? Why would you want to disobey the Lord? Hence, the importance of self-examination. Let's continue. Again, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Something is there. But it needs to grow. It needs to abound. Okay? The moment our Lord saves you, you are sealed. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But our Lord is gentle. He's not going to bombard you like he tells us to be onto others. To be gentle. Yet don't give them the whole sandwich right away. You have to feed them with morsels. You think the Lord's going to tell us to do something that he himself is not going to do as pertaining unto growing you in the faith? Is there something wrong with you? Seriously. Huh? Come on now. Come on now. It's, and, and, and see, that's a problem sometimes. I, I get it. I get it. When you're a babe, a uh, newly born again church of the living God, you want to know everything. You do. Your, your, your head's a sponge. Your heart's a sponge. Give it to me. Give it to me. That's why when someone first truly, genuinely is saved, born again, converted, the Lord saves them. That's why Satan is so quick to send Jehos, Jehovah's Witnesses, speaking of uh, experience here in America that I've gone through. Jehos, okay? Morons, the Mormons. Care Catholics, Pentecostals, okay? Because you're a babe. You're a babe, see? And you want to know so much right away. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I, and, and I get that. But see, but see, verse 6. And to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, ooh, patience. And to patience, godliness. Godliness. Not meaning sinlessly perfect, that you are God. No, that means godliness is being separate. Those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Being other than the world that we are called to be ambassadors unto. See? Okay? You get that, right? Yes, yes. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Not talking about the Lord. But lacketh these things. What things? Again, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Okay? Give you an example. I had uh, recently been rebuked by two brethren and my wife, <laughs> okay, about some things that I was not aware of that I needed to be corrected upon. Okay? There were several things like that. I needed to be corrected. I could not see them. Thankfully, praise the Lord, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, which is officially now, brother, both of you, three. My, my dear friend, another brother, uh, who I uh, share a kindred bond with, and also my wife, okay? So three witnesses witnessed to me about, hey, Brad, you got, you got some things we need to work on. I didn't see them. I was unaware. Okay? I was unaware. See, there are certain things that are in you, brother, sister, that sometimes other people have to bring up to you. Okay? It's not, now continuing, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. See, those who are of the church of the living God can be blind to certain things of themselves. That's why daily examination, proving your own selves, that's why that is important. And if something continues 
that's an issue, praise the Lord. He will rebuke you. He will correct you. He will chasten you. And if you ain't getting that, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Have you hardened your heart? Someone of the church of the living God can't do that. Unfortunately. For if ye, if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. Or, excuse me, ye shall never, ha ha, fall. Fall. Ye shall never fall. Okay, now looking at verse 19 again. We have also more, we, we, Church of the Living God, have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. I was made privy to this debate, if you will. No, 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 no. Um, um, pondering of this particular verse. I was made aware of it uh, from others. And I saw some things that... Okay, there's nothing wrong with questioning. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Nothing wrong with that of the Church of the Living God. But to be a little angry, <laughs> to be standoffish about certain things, that's not healthy. That's not right. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Verses 12 on to verse 12. 20. Now, let's verse 19 in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Galatians chapter 4 Verses 12 on to verse 20. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Okay. We, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile, Paul is the apostle unto us, hello, Gentiles, as Peter was the apostle unto the circumcision the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? Yes, yes. But his example on how to follow Christ is for all, okay? We have to remember that. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then this blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. They would have done anything to learn more of the Lord. Okay? As Paul just said. But here Paul is rebuking them because there were those who crept in who wanted to bring them under the law. That they have to keep the law to be saved, to be right with God. A continuing thing. Which today, but that's no. No, 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 no. Also have a video on that of uh, debunking the faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. Lie! Okay? Touch on that in that video. If I can remember, I'll try to put that in this video as well. Okay? Like I said previously, I, I often forget about links. <laughs> so, so just, just so you know. Verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? A lot 
lot of people will treat you as an enemy when you tell them the truth. Even those among your own brethren. That's why the longer you walk with our Lord, you appreciate. You are grateful, thankful for rebuke, chastening, correction. As I am thankful and grateful for every brother and sister of the Church of the Living God who the Lord has used to correct me, to rebuke me, to chasten me. Let's continue. They, Judaizers, those who want to bring you under the law, zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. But it, is always, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And there is none good but one. That is God. And not only when I am present with you. Ah, you got to love that verse. Look at that verse. Look at that. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And there is none good but God. How do you learn of our Lord Jesus Christ? Through the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. And we adhere our lives unto the scriptures. How our Lord would have us to live. As his ambassadors. As ministers of reconciliation. Who have the word of reconciliation. Okay? Okay? But look at how he finished this up. And not only when I am present with you. When other people can see you. Oh. How, again. <laughs> Brethren, how are you when it's just you and the Lord in these four walls? Okay? <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> Verse 19. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Christ be formed in you. Formed. Molded. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. Paul had doubt of these people. But look at this. My little children of whom I prevailed in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Look at verse 1, or verse 12, excuse me. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. To live by the example that he had given, okay? My little children of whom I prevail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. See, when you are saved, born again, converted, you are sealed. But see, there is a formation that takes place. Okay? You are not, you, the minute the Lord saves you, you are not the same as someone who has walked with the Lord for 20 some odd years. Okay? You have things exercised. You go through things. You don't get all that right away. Okay? This is a walk. Things are formed over time. Remember? Remember how he says in first, uh, Second Peter chapter 1? Uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, comma, and abound. And abound. If they be in you, one, what he just listed. And they abound. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. My little children... Of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you? I desire to be present with you now and, and to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you till Christ be formed in you. 
Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth with Christ liveth in me. Okay? Christ is in you. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Christ is in you. The Lord is that spirit. The Holy Ghost, you know, one God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He lives within you. Okay? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Frustrating the grace of God. If you're not growing, if you're being stagnant, if these things are not the bounding, you could be very well frustrating the grace of God. Because look at verse 10 in 2 Peter chapter 1. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Self-examination. Self-examination again. I'll get it out. <laughs> But verse 19 again. We have also a more sure, a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1, on to verse 16. Uh, 6. 6. <laughs> uh, verses 1 on to verse 6 in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, ministry of reconciliation, we all are in the ministry of reconciliation. As ambassadors, how you live outside your door, and not only... In the presence of others. Therefore seeing we have this ministry. As we have received mercy. We faint not. But have renounced. The hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness. Nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. The manifestation of the truth. Truth being manifested in how you live according to the scriptures. You are to work out. Work out your salvation. Not work to save yourself. No. Work it out. Walk the talk. Okay? Okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g, God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And we have to add verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, referring unto, his, unto the body, that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Not by what you are doing, but
but God living in you and through you in how you adhere your life onto the scriptures. Okay? To be a testimony. To be a testimony. Again. Okay? 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 Now, go to chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Again, very familiar. These ought to be very familiar unto you. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is not talking about marriage, fellowshipping. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Temple of God? You mean the church building? Oh, shut up. I love you. Shut up. No. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Look at verse 17. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Oh boy. So now when you go back to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. The scriptures are sure. Okay? Okay? We have, dear brethren, the scriptures. We, as the church of the living God, know how we are to walk. We know uh, at the basic, at the basic, that we are to walk according as the scriptures tell us to walk, located within the Pauline epistles, doctrine specifically for us today, but also encompassing the entirety of scripture, okay? You can learn a lot from the Proverbs. You can learn a lot uh, out of the book of the Kings and Chronicles and stuff like that. Yes, for our instruction in righteousness. Yes, yes. We know that how to live godly, separate, is found in the scriptures. Not a Bible. In the scriptures. So we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. The day star rise in your hearts. What about, what about this? What about this? Okay, the day star. Why would some think that that's not the Lord Jesus Christ? I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Now, bear with me, okay? I'm 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 in Second uh, Peter chapter one. This <laughs> the scriptures in this are paragraph, which I can't stand. <laughs> but I want to show you something, okay? Now, verse nineteen. I really got to pay attention. Verse nineteen in the scriptures. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Things that he will shew you over time. Arising. Growing. Okay. What does the non-King James Version say? 
And so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Prophetic word. Charismatic. I like to say that. This is a prophetic word for you. Yeah. Also we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning, excuse me, morning star rises in your hearts. Morning star. The scripture says day star. The non-King James says morning star. Things that are different ain't the same. Okay? Yes, the morning, like some of you will argue, well, the morning is the beginning of the day. Yes, but they're two separate things. Okay? What does the non-inspired vomitus say? We have also the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Morning star. Now th this one, this one is from the Netwit Living in the Trash or the uh, Nefarious Luciferian Translation, the NLT. And I, uh, before, obviously, I, I'm not going to get the New American Standard or the ESV or any of those you can do a simple search of this verse on your own time, online, or through whatever of the Bibles that you yourself have. A lot of them, about 98% of them, take day star and turn it to morning star. Why is that? Look at, you can't see this, but listen to this from the NLT. Okay, this is, gonna, this is going to irritate you, and I don't mean to do that purposely, but check this out. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. <laughs> you must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns, get a load of this, and Christ the morning star, capital M and S, shines in your hearts. Morning star. The scriptures say day star, not morning star. Now, here's what these Bibles do. Okay? Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 22. Verse 16 from the scriptures. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and lowercase morning star. Okay? I am the bright and morning star. And of course, in the uh, non King James and even in the NIV, they virtually they say, uh, for example, I, Jesus, this is the non King James, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Uh, uh, NIV. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. Yeah. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Okay? I, Jesus, have sent my angel. Uh, this is the NLT. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. Isaiah, chapter 14. 
Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Okay. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14. Uh, beginning at verse 12. How art thou... Uh, 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weakest, which didst weaken the nations? Okay? Now, what about the uh, non-King James? How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Son of the morning. Son of the morning. Remember, people, Satan is a created being. Okay, you read on your own time, Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 1 under verse 19. He is not talking about the king of Tyrus. He is talking about Satan. Okay, you read that on your own time. Satan is a created being. Okay, with all the, the light, uh, the light by his, um, the, his brightness, and the stones that were his covering, okay? As it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? People like to say Lucifer means light bearer. I, I beg to differ. Son of the morning. Son of the morning. Okay? God created Lucifer. Who is Lucifer? Son of the morning. Satan is a created being. But see, Satan got what? Taken up with his own pride. Didn't he? Yeah. Because he was taken, captivated by his own beauty, his own brightness. You know? How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations? Now, let's look at the NIV. How have you fallen from heaven? Morning star. Morning star. So the morning star fell from heaven. The morning star. Who is the morning star? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Lucifer is the son of the morning, not the morning star. Yeah. How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. Now you think about that, what the, this disgusting NIV just said accusing the Lord of weakening the nations like in this context. Yeah. And what about the NLT? How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. Shining star. Uh, morning star. You checked. You checked the NI, uh, the New American Standard. I believe also the Amplified, the ESV, the RV. Okay. Morning star. Yea, hath God said, it's son of the morning, not shining star. Not morning star. Star is not in the text. And you check this in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew of the um, received text, the one that underlies the authorized version, star is not located. The Hebrew word for star is not located in there. Okay? Morning star. So the NIV says that how you have fallen from heaven, 
morning star, son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations? Yeah. Yeah. And you also got to remember now, okay, uh, I think I'm done with this. I think I'm done with this for right now because I, I just can't stand paragraph uh, sets of scriptures. Okay. But now when you go back to Second Peter chapter 1, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day, day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And again, and again in Second Peter chapter 1, the new King James, the not King James says morning star, uh, the NIV says morning star, and the NLT says, in Christ the morning star. Day star. Day star. Totally different. And see, someone can be confused by that. Unconsciously, sometimes, I guess. But no, the day star arise in your heart. That's the Lord arising, shewing you truth, guiding you through the scriptures to guide you onto godliness, being separate than, other than. Because you've got to remember, okay, we have got to remember about the, this light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You know this by heart. You ought, ought to know this one by heart. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Okay? All right? And of course, remember Ephesians 6.12? And uh, let's see. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Okay? Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 on to verse 5. In the beginning, God, I like that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It's not heavens, by the way, it's singular, heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, God said, said, spoke, let there be light. And there was light. There's the Godhead for you. In the beginning, God, the Father, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. God said the Word. The Word spoke. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Spoke. There's the Godhead. Okay? Let's continue. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. God our Father, light. Lucifer, sun. Of the morning. Darkness. 
Why? Because he got all full of himself. He was taken by his own beauty. See. And of course, we can go now to John. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 1 under verse 14. In the beginning was the capital W word. The beginning of the seven occurrences of the capital W word. Okay. And the word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And God said, spoke. God's words are life. Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word, lowercase, is truth. The Word, the Scriptures. Okay, but he spoke. Spoke the word. Genesis 1 3, people. Okay, Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay, let's continue. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And I've already talked about this, about how people who are alive, even you devils, that are still light within that eye of yours, even though you are full of darkness. Let's continue. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L, Light, referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, meaning John was not that light, obviously, but, okay, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light. Note the capital L's there. That's very significant. Despite what Mr. Daniel says. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, his own, the Hebrews, the Jews, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, because he's not forcing himself upon you. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We don't save ourselves. God saves you. You have to come to him on his terms. It's not Calvinism. Okay? It's not. Okay? It's not. He has a requirement. Yes, belief is... Yes. Yes, of course it is. But you need to first be broken. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 1 under verse 17. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, 
an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. And unfortunately, those of the church of the living God can commit what Paul is talking about. Unfortunately. For this ye know, this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And you look in uh, these Bibles, a lot of them take up out upon the children of disobedience. Very interesting. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. That by itself implies what? have a choice. What are you going to choose? What What is it with you? What is it with you? Do you love the things of the world so much? Are they that powerful? Are, is it that strong to you that you are willing to make yourself odious unto the Lord Jesus Christ that you're willing to keep that What is it? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. You want, you want to know a really good way to do that? Really, living, living the scriptures out there! Living the scriptures here. That's a really good way. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For, who, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Don't worry. We're going to be getting there to John here in a little bit. Wherefore he saith, Awake, wherefore he saith, excuse me, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools. Fools say in their heart there is no God but as wise, fearing the Lord. Remember, redeeming the time, <laughs> because the days are evil. <laughs> Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. The day star is Jesus Christ, my friend. 
maybe you did not think that because of the corruptions that are out there. I, uh, I saw a website that was using the scriptures, but yet giving the explanation of an Alexandrian, of a yea hath God said. <laughs> no, no, no. John chapter 3, verses 1, on to verse 21. Oh, yeah! Come on now! There was a man of the Pharisees, Pharisee, tradition, scripture, Catholic. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night, and that is a stigma that Nicodemus never has lost. He's known as the one who came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, meaning master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, dost, except God be with him. Nicodemus was seeking. Nicodemus wanted truth. Okay? But he was of the Pharisees. Tradition above scripture. Okay? I personally believe Nicodemus is up there with our Lord. I truly believe that truly believe that. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, excuse me, verily, verily, I say unto thee, thee, singular, thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, and I, and I, yeah, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the, capital S, Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Water. You've heard the phrase of women with child that their water broke? Sorry, sorry, but, okay, water symbolizing what? Natural. Read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 sometime. Okay. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Again, verse 6 is crucial for verse 5. Because, except a man be born of water, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and of the Spirit, verse 5, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Sorry for that, doing that comparison kind of thing. But verse 6 explains verse 5. Okay? It's nothing to do, you Catholics, with water baptism as necessary for salvation. And you Charismatics who adhere to Acts 2.38, okay? Your replacement theology, by the way, that makes you Catholic, okay? Whether you like to admit that or not. This is not giving confirmation for water baptism, okay? Just so you know, okay? Let's continue. Verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, addressing Nicodemus, ye, plural, more than one, meaning everybody. Okay? That's why thee, thou, thine, ye is very important. Because you look in the non-King James Version and all the others, it's like he says, uh, they say that our Lord said, Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. That's you, you. No, 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 no. The, singular, ye, everybody. And see, putting you, you there leads into all kinds of heresies. 
Let's continue. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered, and Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Look at this. Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, Art thou a master, rabbi, of Israel, and knowest not these things? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with the excellency of speech, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified, to know if people are saved. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the capital S spirit and of power. Speaking smooth things, prophesying deceits, itching, tickling people's ears. Devil speak. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Just believe. Just believe. But in the power of God. What he has done for you. Howbeit we speak wisdom. Among them that are perfect. Not sinlessly perfect. Those whose hearts are right with the Lord. Who came to him on his terms. A perfect heart is a broken heart. By the way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> God knows your heart yeah he knows it's not broken because a perfect heart like I said it's a broken heart yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the lowercase s, Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Something that he imparts unto us himself. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. John chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Nicodemus answered, answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master? Art thou a master of Israel? And knowest not these things?
Verse 15 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Go back to John chapter 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Talking about being crucified. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved, past tense, the world that he gave, past tense, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The past tenses, okay? John 3.16 is not the gospel, okay? It is not. It's past tense. He loved and gave the way of the cross, you know, Calvary, if you do not come to him through the cross on his terms, broken and contrite, okay? This is past tense. God's love is at Calvary. That's what this is talking about. And if you don't come to him there on his terms, you ain't, you ain't saved. And see, people like to jump over so much and just go to believe. Skipping over the necessity of brokenness. For God sent, sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, verses 18 on to verse 21. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Why so many of these devils are gone so far beyond the past of no point of no return. Because they love darkness. They love their sins. They love themselves way too much. Hence they won't come to the light. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Neither come, uh, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Self-examination, anybody? But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Not Timothy. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 12. But let's let's refresh our memory. Okay? Let's refresh our memory. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. 
until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart, shewing you things. Uh, the light reproves darkness. Our Lord will show you truth as you continue. That's why uh, Peter in verses 4 on to verse 9, that's what he was talking about. Abound, that these things abound, grow in you, see. The day star arise in your hearts. Arise. Growing. Getting higher. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 12. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Now see, the easy believism heretic will come and focus on ought. And they will go to that one word and make all this heresy. Ought. You ought to. You don't have to. You ought to. Yea, hath God said. Hence, the easy believism heretic, when they say, they, they, never mind what surrounds, never mind what surrounds, ought. But they focus right there on that one word and build their heretical doctrine off of that kind of thing. And they, all the while, context, context, you devils are the ones who obliterate and totally ignore context. Okay? Give you a perfect example, hot shot. You like to say about Romans chapter 10, verse 14. <laughs> and you say of those of us who preach the true gospel that we ignore context? Uh, uh, in uh, modern uh, linguistic, you're tripping. Yeah, yeah, you're going on a trip, boy. Verse 2. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. See, God wants to change your life. He's going to. He's not forcing it on you. But see... God will not save you just to leave you living as the world. What's wrong with you? Okay? <laughs> What's wrong with you? And some, and some, you know, they behave only a certain way where other people are watching. But you get them when they're alone in the four walls? Come on now. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. This is just talking about fornication. Keep reading, dear friend. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Honor. Honor unto who? The Lord. He lives within you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And who defiles the temple of the Holy Ghost? Him will God destroy? I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Not in the lust of concupiscence even as the Gentiles which know not God. That, okay, now verse 6. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Defraud. So, verse 6 talks about defrauding his brother. While in um, verse 3 it talks about fornication. So, Talking about the will of God, your sanctification, he is not just for fornication. 
dear man. Uh, no, uh, looking at verse 6, defrauding. What is to defraud something? To falsify it? To lie? Sanctification is not just a physical thing as refraining from, or, or sanctification, excuse me, is not just limited to just fornication. Okay? You, you know this. You know this. But see, there are those out there who nitpick in order to deceive. Yeah. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. And do you get that right away when the Lord saves you, dear friend? Come on now. Come on now. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, because the light reproves the darkness and stuff like that, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Picking up at verse uh, 8. He therefore despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit himself. Okay? The Lord is that Spirit. Jesus Christ, God our Father. You have the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Savior, the Holy Ghost. You have Him living within you. He doesn't reveal everything to you right away. It arises as the day dawns. It starts, then it rises. Okay? You get it? But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. And to work with your own, and to work with your hands, as we commanded you, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing, and that ye may have lack of nothing. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses one under verse nine. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. Are they not saying that right now? Of course they are. But also, too, and kind of, uh, think about it like this. These easy believism heretics, peace and safety teaching people to be at peace with their sins and safe in their sins by disputing, by ye ought to. You know, you don't have to. Yeah. God saves you and he's okay with you walking as the world. Go on someplace. You're going someplace. Unless you repent. And again, there are those of you who can't because you've been choice. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all, ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day, the day, 
be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Okay? So, go back to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have a sure, we also have a more sure word of prophecy. Word of prophecy. The scriptures. Okay? Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, take heed to what the Lord will say to you in the scriptures, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. We, who are of the church of the living God, we are constantly going to the light. The light is our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He is that true light. See, Satan um, transformed into an angel of light. Okay? Imitate. To fake it. Like what the Masons, you know, they are Luciferians. They worship the what the devil himself calls the light bear when Lucifer is son of the morning. Not the light bear. And I will argue any of you on that. Okay? I believe the text of the scripture. Okay? Lucifer, son of the morning. Okay? And I know that I have uh, referred to Lucifer meaning light bearer before. I repent of that. Forgive me for doing that in older videos. Uh, Lucifer is son of the morning. Okay? We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. Catholicism teaches, you know, you, you shouldn't read the Bible yourself. Even though they kind of glibly say, read it, but then again, they're talking about the Bibles that they make to give on to the people, not the one that the Lord has made, okay? That the one the Lord hath written, okay? Okay, so on to the Catholic they're all about private interpretation. <laughs> you Catholics out there, go ahead and give your uh, your what your church says about uh, Revelation chapter 17. <laughs> oh, that was the Roman Empire, but not Catholicism. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I beg your pardon, brother. Luke chapter 24, verses 25 on to verse 27. Then he said unto them, talking to the guys on the road to Damascus, or Emmaus, uh, excuse me, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So you see the Lord expounding to these people what? The scriptures. And of course, go to uh, verse 44. On to um, verse 48. Oh, no, on to verse 49, excuse me. 44 on to verse 48. Ah, uh, 49, <laughs> excuse me. 
And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the psalm, psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Who did that? Who did that? And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, unto the Jew first. And ye are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Private interpretation. Catholics. Some of these guys who... Uh, charge big money to get this like DVD. That Shepherd's Chapel, those devils, they sell their these secret uh, teachings on their uh, perversions of the scriptures on like the, the Mark of the Beast they did something on and also in Peter and stuff like that. Okay, got to pay big money to get this teaching that uh, you have to go to them to learn because according to some of these people who, who adhere to the Private interpretation like Catholics, okay? You need them. The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, He can't teach you these things. You got to go to them. These things have I, uh, John 16, verses 1, on to verse 15. Okay? These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea. The time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Them times are coming. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. They are one and the same. Okay? They are one and the same. You go ahead and um, uh, read John chapter 14 on your own time. Okay? Jesus is the Father. Okay? But these things, verse 4, But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will. I will send him unto you. The Lord, Jesus Christ, will send him unto you. He will. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. And when you are saved, born again, converted, sealed until the day of redemption, the day star is arising in your heart. Hey, hey, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Sanctification. And of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and he see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged <laughs> yeah I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now howbeit when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth 
For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Because Jesus is the Father. Uh, was that what we were supposed to read to? Yes, yes, yes. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Elsewhere he says that the Father will send the Comforter. Right there he says in verse 7, I will send him unto you. Because they're one and the same. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit, God the Father is the soul, the Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ is the body. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Some people say it backwards, body, soul, and spirit, it's spirit, soul, and body, as found in the scriptures. Okay? Now go to James chapter 1. We're almost done. James chapter 1. Oh, longer than I expected. James chapter 1. James 1, verses 1 on to verse 8. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, and ten of them are in England. Oh, and, and, and some, or, or uh, it's in Harlem. <laughs> Greeting. <laughs> My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Because the Lord is all. Isn't he all unto you? Oh no, no, you got you gotta get things outside of there, huh? Yeah. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Up and then down. Up and then down. Okay? Yes, as the church of the living God, we have high times. We have low times. Okay? But see, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. Did you read the proverb for today? Hmm? Okay. An unstable man. Up here, down. Great highs and great lows. Careful of people like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at, um, look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with wind, with the wind and tossed. Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. And if you see something, why do you hope for it? Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is... And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek 
him. So see, the faith that you have is not to be put upon faith. You don't have faith in your faith. Your faith is on the Lord Jesus Christ. That faith that you say you claim to have, it's supposed to be resting upon Jesus Christ. Not yourself and you having faith in your faith. Again, that's, that's Christian science. Metaphysical mind science. That's Satanism. Okay? But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. First Peter chapter 1 verses 20 on to verse 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Esoteric, esoteric kind of thing, which the Masons, which are run by the Jesuits, excel at. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, day star, arise in your hearts, it's not capitalized there, no. But in the context of first, the second Peter chapter one, talking about sanctification, if things about it, he's referring on to the Lord. Okay. He's referring the day star arise in your hearts. Okay. Arising, growing. Okay. So day star, right there, verse 19, it's the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? It's not capitalized, no it is not, no it is not, but he is referring unto the Lord, okay? So, hopefully that will um, answer and put, uh, you know, answer some questions that some have had. Like I said, um, I was made privy to this um, this uh, questioning about that, and um, yeah, it's um, he's talking about the Lord, brethren. He's talking about the Lord. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Um, you know, if there are brethren out there who uh, also have questions like that. Have an email on this uh, on this channel. Go ahead and email me. Uh, and about that, again, if I have not gotten to your email, please forgive me. Okay. Things are getting a little bit bigger. And um, yeah, yeah. If I have not gotten to your email yet. <laughs> have mercy please forgive me um, there are quite a few quite a few so anyway that's going to be it for this video um, thank you very much for watching this if you do um, I love you we love you um, we pray for so many of you and just thank you brethren and don't forget to pray for one another there are brethren out there who we have not heard from for, uh, for some time. Uh, for example, uh, our beloved brother Jeff. Um, uh, you know who you are, who's going, who has some health issues. Uh, we pray for you every day, brother. And you have, the, you have my phone number. Don't be a stranger, okay? But um, that's it for this video. We love you so much. And thank you so much, brethren, for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us, for my wife, her feet, the home situation. Um, yeah. About that. The Lord, it's, today is the 24th. 
Wow, it's 2.30. Today is the 24th. Um, we need to give answer by the 1st. So on the sometime next week, before the 1st, we have to go to the people here. Um, the Lord would have to, <laughs> if the Lord wants us out of here, he has to do it. He has to do it. Um, that's the only way we could do, we can get out of here, if it, if it is as well. So please continue to pray for that. Brother. So Anyway, that's enough. I love you. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you, brother.